case, and, and it's like 180 items, and now I can just do it without even thinking. You know, I'm scoring it just so quickly. Now, of course, I could make mistakes, and someone could get a kind of a bad diagnosis. <laughs> no, no, but anyway, I, you know, there are, some of those tests have a, uh, you know, a, a, a feature where you can go back and says, do you want to do it again to double check your accuracy? And I did that several times, and I was always pretty accurate. So now I can do that, so it, it, it was a task that, if you were just learning it, it would take you a long time, you know, but after I you know, a thousand of them, it's automatic. You know, I can, it's just like, I, don't, I can do it really quickly. So, uh, that's a task that became so routine it didn't require much effort. And so when you think about, you know, what causes processing speed problems, you know, I don't, I'm not a neuropsychologist, so I don't really delve too deeply into these things. I read about it. But you know, there, there's this thing called myelination, or it's, it's about the myelin sheath around nerve fibers, and this is based on research they've done on you know, autopsies and brain scans, and people who have a lot of that myelin around, the, uh, around these nerve cells can think faster and make connections more quickly and retrieve information very quickly. And so uh, it just means faster processing. And they've, they've, you know, they've done studies with children who have head injuries that tear the myelin sheath uh, show deficits in processing speed. So really, when you think about processing speed and why is it taking my kids so long? And, and now, of course, some of it could be uh, ADHD because their, their work is constantly interrupted by distractions and inattention. And some of it could be anxiety and perfection. I've tested some kids before where they work very slowly because it has to be just perfect, you know. But if you've ruled out things like uh, dyslexia and, and they don't have any problems with decoding words or uh, pronouncing words or recognizing words and they don't have any learning problems and yet they take all night long to do work, maybe they just have processing speed weaknesses. That's just the way their brain operates. And so, it can, uh, you know, here's these, you know, these groups have been found to have uh, processing speed deficits, including reading disabilities. But I have tested kids before where they don't have any learning problems. They just have, it takes them forever to get things done. And if you've ruled out, as I said, anxiety and perfectionism, and maybe that's just, you know, the problem. Period. Um, and so it's common in a lot of developmental disorders. And as I talked, as I spoke of earlier, that's why some IQ tests, you know, you can get an alternative uh, IQ by taking out uh, working memory and processing speed. Um, so if, you have, if you're slow at processing, you might have pretty good memory and you can hold it in mind, but if you have a slow processing speed, it takes you longer to hear it, so then you do lose. You do lose some of the information, just because you didn't take it in real quickly and say, oh, that's what I have to do. This is what I have to write. Uh, you may be slower in just formulating your verbal responses or your written responses, and you may be slow in retrieving specific words or constructing questions. Now, some of that could also be, you know, an actual word retrieval problem, but if given time, you know, the student is able to come up with it, it shows that they just process more slowly, it takes longer to retrieve and come up with the information. Do any of you feel you have slow processing? Anybody here? <laughs> I didn't really have to raise your hands. But <laughs> anyway, that's, yeah, you know, so I can really frust be frustrating, be really frustrating. Um, so, uh, now, of course, if you have, some kids have slow processing speed just on certain things. I tested a kid recently who is spending five or six hours a night on homework, and she was able to, when I gave her the actual processing speed tasks uh, from an IQ test, she was okay, it was average. But when I gave her tasks that required reasoning or language understanding, it, was, it took forever. So, you know, it just seemed, I thought it was, it was kind of confusing. But 
definitely she needs to have extended time because this was definitely a problem. Um, so, uh, you know, they may not catch all the instructions for completing a task. Slow at copying information. Again, when you're slow, then they're going to have to have copies of that information because it takes them so long to produce. And, of course, it interferes with managing more complex information just like working memory weaknesses do because you get caught up in the slow process of, you know, writing things down or remember, you know, solving it eight times six, it takes you longer to come up with it. So, again, um, you know, this is what I was saying earlier about um, uh, working memory as well, but research shows that, you know, speed of information processing is related to just mental capacity or how much information you can hold and integrate and think about at once. And, of course, reading performance and reasoning and efficient use of working memory. So if you have weaknesses in both areas, it can be a real problem. So that means if, if you can think quickly uh, and you can retrieve information quickly, then you can solve problems more efficiently. And, you, and if you have good working memory, you can hold several pieces of information and pull it all together and draw good conclusions you know, in that way. Um, so you can think at a higher level and you don't, as, it, as I said, you don't get stuck. Uh, or you don't get stuck thinking about a piece of the information. You can go through the automatic information and then, or the lower level information and put more effort into the higher level problem solving. So it can interfere with reading rate, rate of reproduction, rate of problem solving in, in math, and note taking and of course completion of tests and that is a very big uh, that's a very big issue now with you know just processing speed and taking tests and ACTs and SATs and um, uh, and of course the homework completion um, so you know uh, taking a long time to complete homework is, is can be can make life pretty miserable for the kid and, for the family because they're having to redirect. There's some attention there as well. Um, so you have these, all these areas are affected and um, even in a social situation, you know, you can, if you have slow processing speed, it may take you longer to catch a joke or to respond to a, a specific situation. Um, so, you know, it certainly affects how quickly you can formulate your thoughts in reading comprehension. You know, good reading, you can read and comprehend the text rapidly and automatically and with, little, with little attention to the, you know, the, of course, you know, being able to decode the words. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, but it's just slow reading speed. Uh, it interferes with, you know, the ideas what's being said, connecting the text all together and making sense of the, of the story or the text. Uh, and of course, writing speed, you know, when you're writing, you, uh, if you are slow at writing, and I see it all the time, you know, then that means problems with essay tests, taking notes in the classroom, and just, and especially giving abbreviated answers in your work. You know, when a kid is asked a question on an essay test, they just, give a sentence or a phrase, instead of just digging in and writing a whole bunch. Now those kids who can write fast, they, they, they've learned that, okay, the more I write, the better I'm going to do, probably. If you can write fast, that's great, but often these kids think, oh, it's too much effort, it's going to take me forever, so I'll just say this. And of course, if you test them verbally, then you'll see they know a lot more than that phrase. Um, and of course, if you're not automatic in math facts, if it takes you a long time to retrieve those, um, you're going to do badly on a math test that's timed. Uh, so, again, uh, now sometimes, and Ellen, you can help me with this if you want, but sometimes medication, like stimulant medication, what's your knowledge of the research on how much that may speed you up a little, uh, as far as increased processing speed? I, 
I, I, I, I don't know that I know that there's a very direct correlation between stimulant medication and processing speed, mainly because, um, except to the, to the extent where um, the stimulant medication um, causes the neurocircuitry in the prefrontal cortex and the parietal lobe to, uh, you know, to, uh, to function better, which could then probably